We don't have any confirmations or refutations necessarily, but we'll get to that in a moment. First things first, we're talking about... Hello once again, nerds. Thank you for joining me for this episode of your pop culture nerd news headlines. I, as always, am Dustin, and in today's episode, we are going to be talking about Firefly in the rumor mill, as well as Mortal Kombat 11, not 12, 11 in the rumor mill. Uh, 50 Cent might not be in superhero shape anymore, but that's not going to stop him from bringing a new superhero to the big screen. Uh, Stranger Things is finally lifting the veil, plus some Ninja Turtles updates that we need to discuss. All of that and so much more. Before we get into that, though, we have shout-outs to get out of the way. Uh, no real housekeeping to speak of for this episode, aside from shouting out the new followers. And we're going to start this episode off in Instagram. Instagram shout-outs. Uh, we have one new follower on Instagram, Josh Butcher underscore underscore. I actually know Josh. Thank you very much for the follow. Josh, uh, I, I'm pretty sure you are already following on at least the Facebook. So now that you follow me on the IG, welcome nerd to the fold. If you want to get your Instagram shout out, then follow Generally Nerdy on Instagram. YouTube, we have one new follower there as well. Technically speaking, actually, I think it's more uh, appropriately, it's like seven new followers, but uh, or subscribers, I guess, since we're talking YouTube, but only one that has their settings not set to private, and that one is One Welder's Wife. Thank you very much, nerd, for the follow. Uh, if you're not already following the YouTube channel, you really should be, because that's where the full episodes go, youtube.com slash generally nerdy. Then we're finally getting a little bit more traction over on the Getter, so let's do... We're finally getting some more traction over on Getter, so we have a couple follows there. We have, first up, is Christian, U.S. Patriot, Southern Texan, Kafir, Christian Kafir. Thank you very much for the follow, as well as Dex Takis. Uh, thank you also for the follow. If you are on the Getters and you want to stay away from the Twitters, then by all means, follow General Energy on Getter. And rounding out the shout-outs for this episode, we have... TikTok shoutouts to get out of the way. Let's do just start at the top and move our way through because TikTok is always the most active of the following. Uh, so All Star King three one one zero underscore Nerd Titan Gaming Zelo underscore High Harry Lan Lanigan four twenty Mister Water Bottleman one Zeal Lace four zero nine seven Near underscore zero zero four and Apple user randomly generated number. Thank you very much, nerds, for the follow. If you are not yet following on TikTok, that is the uh, most active of the shorts outlets, then follow Generally Nerdy on TikTok. I guess there is one more quick piece of housekeeping, and that is the Friday stream will be happening this week, but again, will not be happening next week. I know, the whole point of streaming is to do it regularly. I apologize, but that's why we switched the second episode of the week to a stream, is because it's going to be kind of hit and miss as to my ability to film, and even more miss for my ability to edit a second episode these days. So, uh, the stream will be happening this week. We will be doing the news live, so you can join me on the YouTube channel. Uh, and if you are not on YouTube right now, and you're on some one of the other platforms, you can catch the uh, re-upload the following day. So this Saturday is when the uh, live news gets not lived. <laughs> Either way, join us around about 7 o'clock Mountain Time. Uh, and yeah, I now return you to your regularly scheduled news program. All right, so shout outs and housekeeping are taken care of. So let's get into music, which is easily the largest section for this episode. So we're going to just jump right into follow ups and corrections. Nothing to correct, but we do have a follow up on the Doom Widow band. If you remember, we talked previously about Doom Widow, which is just the alter ego for the Foo Fighters. It's the thrashy outlet for Dave Grohl and company. Uh, it has been made known by Dave Grohl in the last week that there will be a full and 
proper Doom Widow record. That record uh, is unclear if it is going to be the Foo Fighters all playing the pieces and then maybe some guest players here and there, or if it's just going to be Dave Grohl and then a bunch of hired guns and or guest players as well, or some sort of combination of the two. That is not exactly known, but I'm sure we will definitely be keeping tabs on this one. That is all we have for follow-ups, so we're going to move into new music and videos. Uh, new music, we have a new piece from a band that I've only been passively aware of, and that is Ibaraki, and I'm a apologizing in advance for mispronouncing probably all of these words, but uh, Ibaraki is the side project of Matt Heafy and Isan, or, uh, that is kind of, it's billed as black metal, but that's not like any black metal I've ever listened to. It is definitely more aggressive than Hefe's previous stuff, but Hassan's solo stuff is very much more black than this, so it's some interesting combination of the two. This new track also features Nurgle on uh, guest vocals. Nurgle, obviously, from Behemoth. Uh, so, very interesting. The name of the track is Akumu. Uh, you can follow the link down in the description to listen to it yourself, watch the video on the YouTubes. Uh, this, like I said, is some sort of interesting amalgamation between Matt Heafy's outlets, so uh, Trivium, and then Isan's stuff. And so there is definitely some elements of black. There's a lot more thrashy stuff. Uh, towards the end of this track, we get some of Heafy's melodic vocals, which is probably the thing I am the least fan of when it comes to Trivium and Heafy's outlet just in general. Uh, e either way, this is a really solid track. This is a whole lot of fun if you're into aggressive stuff. Can't necessarily say that it stands out out by and large this is kind of just another uh, face in the crowd so if you're looking for something super unique maybe go elsewhere if you're just looking for a solid aggressive metal track then this is going to be right up your alley our next new piece of music that has been released comes from uh, Jason Richardson and Luke Holland, who are two kids that just can't stop being awesome. Uh, the name of the song is Upside Down, and it features Tim Henderson from Polyphia, uh, this, who is also another group of kids who just can't stop being amazing. Uh, so uh, if you like Jason Richardson's playing, then this is pretty much in that exact same vein. We've got Hose Down before, we got the Tendonitis track, a number of other outings between these two. They also covered uh, Lamb of God's Laid to Rest, um, and, and so on and so forth. So definitely, uh, they are working on a new record. These two, uh, Jason, uh, Richardson and Holland, are working on a record together, even though Richardson is still working on the All That Remains uh, new material as well. So that's, he's a very busy, busy young man. Um, this is this is a lot of crazy guitar work. Again, if you're a fan of Richardson, you know what to expect. If you're not a fan of Richardson, this is a pretty good place to get introduced to his style of playing. Very Neo Shred. Uh, if you are a fan of Polyphia and you never really listened to Jason Richardson and you kind of are like, well, he is now playing for All That Remains, so I don't know how much credence I'm going to give him. This is evidence that you he deserves all of your respect and then some. Even though I, the, the Tim Henderson, it, it's a weird new way to do guest spots uh, where like in the hip hop and pop world, you have a guest vocalist come on for like a verse, you know, they get their one little spot. Uh, this is kind of in that same vein, only it's all instrumental stuff. So Tim Henderson comes in for effectively a solo. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting, really a whole lot of fun. This is, even if you're not really into aggressive music, this is probably the more middle of the ground kind of aggressive that Richardson does. And really, I, that's even being generous there. It's it's just very well played and very well executed. Go check this one out for sure. Let's talk real quick about Health and Lamb of God. Again, we were talking previously about an uh, interesting way to do guest features. Well, now the entire band of Lamb of God, not just Randy Blythe, but everyone in Lamb of God is guesting in this Health song. The name of the song is Cold Blood. It is from the, 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 the new record that Health is putting out, uh, April 8th. The name of the record is Disco Zero, or Disco Four, rather, part two. Uh, and it features other collaborations with Nine Inch Nails and Poppy uh, and a, a number of other artists. Um, this track is very 
not what I expected. And that's the kind of a good thing. Uh, I do know very little about health. Uh, I do know a fair amount about Lamb of God. So I was expecting, because the, the entire band is in here, I was expecting this to be very much a Lamb of God track. While the vocals definitely fall under that for about 80% of this song, I would not say this sounds like your typical Lamb of God track. So it was very pleasantly surprising. There are some really interesting atmospheric kind of almost industrial passages, which is what I'm assuming was the health element of this track. And this one was, was surprising, was very well put together. Uh, strange balance between these two full bands. Uh, health is a three piece, so that kind of helps. But yeah, very uh, recommend, a, a strong recommend. This is a great song. This is something that kind of fits out from the pack. Doesn't really go out in front. It's not something that is like the, a flag bearer of any subgenre of metal or anything like that, but this is just kind of an outlier uh, that, that is just really a whole lot of fun to kind of analyze and sit with for a little while. So definitely recommend this one as well. And our last new piece of music for the episode comes from Vane FM, a band that we, I have mentioned in passing previously on the Clips channel, if you're subscribed over there, uh, Nerd News Clips. We talked about the most anticipated metal records of 2022, and Vane FM's new record is on that list. Uh, and I, I, like I had said previously, I've only kind of heard their first single maybe once, maybe twice in its entirety. This is a new single from them. The name of the track is called Wavery. Uh, this is from the same record. It's their debut record, This World's Going to Ruin You. It's out March 4th, and this song, this has a very similar feeling to why I fell in love with Code Orange. It's that kind of post-metal, but still pretty aggressive, kind of almost atmospheric at times sound that really is re is really right up my alley. Honestly, uh, the the Forever record from from Code Orange, this would fit in with that, and also would kind of fit in with Converge at the same time. So there's a lot of really great stuff going on with Vane FM. I'm, I can't wait to hear more of this record. This is easily a strong recommend from me. Now, new music out of the way. Let's get into the music news for the week. And we're going to kick things off in the news portion with Tool. Uh, Tool has announced that they are going to be releasing an Opiate 2 EP. Uh, this is uh, coming out March 1st, so very, very soon. Uh, next week, to be very specific. Uh, it's going to feature the extended version of the title track. I did not put that down in the notes because I take amazing notes. Uh, it's called Opiate 2. And yeah, it's they've been doing a long version of that song live. And so now they finally put it down on wax, as the saying goes. So the, the actual record's coming out March 1st, and then there's a visual companion to the record that is being released March 18th. Uh, you can follow the link down in the description if you're interested in purchasing it for yourself. Uh, our next piece of really weird news <laughs> is Ed Sheeran. Uh, yeah, not somebody we generally talk about on the channel. He did just do that weird collaboration with uh, Bring Me the Horizon, and now it seems that he's potentially going to be working with Danny Filth from Cradle. Actually, no, not just Danny. The entirety of Cradle of Filth in the near future, because they live near each other, was kind of the reason given in the interview that I read by Danny himself. So, very interesting there. Not exactly the kind of worlds that you would expect to mash up, but... I'll be damned if that's not what's happening. So if this comes to fruition, you can guarantee we will be talking about that. Uh, that's what we've got on that one, though. Let's move into uh, the last piece of news for the music section. And this one's a little bit of a downer. Uh, we did get official word that Mark Lanigan, who uh, is a player with the Queens of the Stone Age, he's been on their last five records, has just passed within the last couple of days. He was 57 years old. Uh, it is uh, any, any one of the guys that has played with Queens passing that young is definitely a tragic loss for the music community as a whole because pretty much anyone who's played with that band is a stellar, stellar musician and a very amazing contributor to the uh, musical conversation at large. So. 
Uh, let's just take a brief moment and remember Mark Lanigan from Queens of the Stone Age. So news done, let's move into tours, the tours section. We only have one piece and it's technically an update. Uh, this has to do with Kitty, like we've talked about a few episodes ago. They are part of the when we were young, big giant festival thing happening in Vegas in a couple in a couple of months. Uh, before that, though, I believe that's in October. Uh, before that, they are going to be doing a couple other reunion shows, both in Virginia, uh, one on September 8th and one on September 11th. You can follow the link down in the description if you want to get tickets for either of those. But yeah, just a, an, in, a, an interesting band from my high school days that I really didn't think I would ever hear from again. And now it looks like they might be putting a proper tour together, starting with these three dates. So uh, I don't know why, but we're definitely going to be keeping tabs on this one as it develops. Uh, but that is all we have for music news and all of the things. Let's do suggestions here in the music section and our first suggestion is going to be Jason Richardson and Luke Holland's Tendinitis. There is a live performance video of these two, again, young dudes uh, playing this incredible tune uh, that you can find on the YouTubes. Again, the name of the song is Tendinitis. This is just a killer, killer example of modern shred guitar and a uh, taste of things to come in heavy music. And I'm super excited for it. And then our other suggestion is a little more on the nerdy side and actually a little more on the not heavy metal side. And that is for Minor. Uh, their record, The Rising Tide, is a little old at this point, but definitely deserves to be re-listened to. If you are even a passing fan of Linkin Park or you just like really good hip hop, this record is politically aware. This record, although, I mean, you may or may not agree with with the politics. It's very well educated and, and well versed and just well damn written on every level. So it's definitely worth a listen. So go check out The Rising Tide by Fort Minor. That is everything in music. Let's move right into gaming and tech. And this honestly, this section kind of blew up over the last few hours before I came to film because a bunch of stuff was released. So let's just start with the follow-ups and then we will get into the news. We do have a few follow-ups. We're going to start first with Battlefield 2042, uh, a leaked internal meeting, audio from a meeting uh, from EA uh, has an executive blaming Halo, uh, saying uh, for for the poor launch of Battlefield 2042, uh, saying that it's not fair to compare the two because Halo is a better game. Uh, Chief Studios Officer Laura, I'm going to mispronounce her last name, Laura Maile, uh was quoted as saying it's unfair to compare 2042 to Halo because Halo was more polished at launch. What a strange time we live in when that is something you can't hold against a developer. I, I, I know I sound like a curmudgeonly old man when I say this, but I really miss the days of I get a brand new game home, I put it into my console, and it plays the way it should the first time. <laughs> this is just, oh man, this is insane. So I just had to bring this one up. I'll see if I can't, I, I'm pretty sure I have it linked down in the uh, video description. So if you're on the YouTube and or Rumble even, uh, that is definitely an option. Go click that link and go check that out because it's a little bizarre, but we're going to stay in the Halo vein. We have a couple of uh, follow-ups for Halo Infinite, the first of which being Fracture Tenrai has made its way back. So if you have not yet, finished your Tenrai event unlockables, then you have more time now this week, and then we will have one more week before it is uh, gone for good. So uh, don't fret too much if you don't get them all. I'm I'm about two 
pieces away from finishing the challenges, so I will very likely finish that this week. Actually, very potentially finish it in stream this Friday. Yes, we will be streaming this Friday. Uh, so there's that, but there's also later this week, we have a couple of things with the mid-season update. Mid-season's a little bit of a misnomer because we're a little past mid-season at this point, but either way, they're calling it the mid-season update. Uh, so mid-season update is going to fix a lot of things, not the least of which some multiplayer issues that everybody's been crying about, but uh, the there are going to be a slew of fixes in campaign as well. So they have been very vague on those details. Uh, they're also been very vague on exactly what they're fixing in multiplayer aside from ping issues and server issues and so on and so forth. So uh, there's that. But there is also, as literally right before I walked away from the computer doing the research for today, there was another update with this. And that is that once this big update happens, you are going to lose all of your theater recordings. So that very presumably there's going to be something going on with the theater, uh, which is again, another sore spot for big fans of the, of the game because theater is largely difficult to use. I'm not going to say unusable, but very difficult to use uh, in, in a, a very large number of ways. Uh, so if you have things that you have yet to record uh, or, you know, you need to clip or whatever that are just sitting in your theater, you have until presumably the end of the week to do that. So as you're watching or listening to this, uh, you have got like a day or two left. So uh, definitely get to backing up any of those, you know, triple quadruple kill tacular kill frenzy uh, kind of things because you are going to be losing those original recordings with the mid-season update. And then our final follow-up for the episode has to do with Fallout 76. Uh, I, I mean, we have a, at least a couple of viewers who are big Bethesda fans, so I'm just, this one's going out for you. Uh, we have the official roadmap for 2022 has been released. You can see it on your screen right now. Uh, it starts with Invaders from Beyond. This is the event that we already knew was coming, but then it goes on to the Pit and Nuka World Tour. Uh, specifics on what those all are exactly besides Invaders from Beyond is kind of speculation at this point, but we at least know that these things are coming this year, so presumably with the seasons comes a new uh, section for Fallout 76. So that is pretty great. That is what we have for follow-ups. Let's move now into trailers. We do have a few trailers for gaming and tech. First up is Evil Dead The Game. Just watch it. Just watch this one. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I Yeah, I really can't wait for this one to come out. Uh, and then Capcom, uh, a big piece of news for this week, Capcom's counter has finally counted down and it is exactly what we thought, uh, kind of. Uh, so that counter was counting down to the reveal of uh, Street Fighter VI. Um, say what you will about the logo, I agree, it looks kind of cheap, and by kind of, I mean you could have paid 20 bucks to get somebody on Fiverr to make that for you, but uh, the, the Street Fighter VI reveal is not the only reveal, so the actual surprise, because this is something that people have been speculating it was going to be for a while with this, this Street Fighter VI, but the actual surprise was the other trailer that was released with the uh, end of this countdown, and that is the uh, Capcom Fighting Collection. It is going to be a bunch of old school Capcom fighting games, and I mean, I'm pretty sure it's like 12, including Puzzle Fighter and Gem Fighter, which are two of my abs. Puzzle Fighter for freaking sure is so much fun. Anyway, it's going to get its own rollback netcode, which means we're going to be able to play them online against each other, and yes, please, and thank you, Capcom. This is fantastic. Both trailers, the, the Street Fighter 6 reveal tease thing as well as the game trailer for the fighting collection uh, linked down in the description. 
And then our other trailer for this episode is Elden Ring. The actual release date for this game is this coming Friday. So it's a few days out yet. Uh, I, I know, I know. I, we, we went over this. I screwed up the, the release date two episodes ago. I corrected myself. But they did release a new trailer, the actual final trailer for the game. The release trailer is what they're calling it. And just just makes it look that much more hype it's just going crazy for this elden ring again this friday there's a lot of issues going on with pre-downloads and when can i play and so on and so forth but all of that information is easily findable if you just do a simple google search so that is trailers that is news that is follow-ups now we have suggestions gaming and tech suggestions we're going to do the first one is a little bit of a throwback. It is a GameCube game, Metal Gear Twin Snakes. This is the revised version of Metal Gear Solid, which launched on the PS1 or PSX, if you will, and was the art kind of the, the thing that made Hideo Kojima a freaking rock star in this business. Uh, this version is the kind of idealized version because you have the additional uh, ability to do first person view at, with your weapons and not just look around, as well as the improved fighting mechanics. So yeah, very amazing. Like this is probably one of my top three games of all time. Metal Gear Twin Snakes is the penultimate version of this game. Just yeah very much worth a replay so but bust out that old gamecube and let this one rock and then our other one is splitgate i have dipped into the splitgate pool once again and kind of didn't realize how much i missed this game it is absolutely in the days of uh, wanting more content for halo scratching the itch and it's not, I'm not going to say it's necessarily a substitute for Halo because there are wildly different gameplay elements between the two of them, but they are similar enough that if you are unhappy with Halo, but you like that style, generally speaking, Splitgate will do the trick. So if you have yet, it's free to play. Definitely download that bad boy and let her rip because yes, lots of fun with the portals and the things and the guns and just, yeah, do the thing and let's get into it. So uh, that is suggestions for gaming and tech. Now we are rolling right into comic books and books, and we do have actually some book stuff to talk about, not just comic books. So first we're jumping into trailers. We don't have any follow-ups or anything, so in trailers, we have one trailer to speak of, and that is the new Ghost Rider book. Uh, Ghost Rider uh, is coming out February 23rd. Third, so you know, today as you're watching this, <laughs> tomorrow as I'm filming it, uh, but it is written by Benjamin Percy with art by Corey Smith, Ghost Rider number one, once again, tomorrow, or today rather, February 23rd, uh, yeah, it's going to be a great one. So let's get into news. And our first piece of news uh, is actually a little bit old, about two weeks, if I'm remembering correctly, because I didn't write down the date this happened. But I don't know why this didn't go into an episode yet. The Mortal Kombat Compendium, uh, something that probably not a lot of people outside of the Mortal Kombat community care too much about, but there was at one point going to be a compendium, a companion book to all things Mortal Kombat. Uh, unofficial, it was going to be an unlicensed book that was being put out by a group of people calling themselves the Uppercut Editions. Uh, some of them I am passive friends with on the social medias uh, and, and just it was super hype. They had a Kickstarter that ran and everybody bought in and everybody paid for their copy and they were going to do final printing and they needed the final okay from Warner Brothers for some reason and Warner Brothers then pulled the plug one last time. So the real quick of what happened with this, uh, it was an idea that a couple of Mortal Kombat fans had years ago. They started getting it into motion uh, when it got big enough and noticed enough, Warner Brothers said, uh, cease and desist, if you will. And so they had a meeting with Warner Brothers and said, if we put unofficial and unlicensed and so on and so forth, is it okay if we do that? And Warner Brothers said, maybe. And then when they, again, when they went to submit for their final approval, Warner Brothers 
just said, no, nah, we changed our minds. You can't do that. Uh, so yeah, the compendium is dead. I will do my best to find all of the, uh, a bunch of good pictures anyway. Uh, I almost actually got my hands on an early, early build of this book. Uh, but sadly I was unable to because the day job just kept getting in the way and yeah, it is what it is at this point, but sad day for the combat community. Our next piece of comic book and book news is a combination of the two, actually, with a little bit of TV streaming thrown in for good measure, and that is Wild Cards. Uh, if you are unfamiliar, Wild Cards is the other book from George R.R. R. Martin, other book series. And I say other book, this actually, I'm pretty sure, began before he started writing Song Fire and Ice. Uh, and has been going for many, 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 many more books than F Song Fire and Ice will ever go. Uh, there is uh, approximately 28 books and 21 short stories published in the wild card universe that George R.R. R. Martin is a writer, I say a writer, we'll get to that, and the editor for this series. Uh, the series has been picked up once again by Marvel to do a comic book run based on the universe that is in existence in the wildcard books. Plus, uh, this is not something we've talked about recently at all. I think it's been about two years, honestly, since we talked about this. But the live action series has left Hulu and has found a new home over at Peacock. So Peacock currently owns the rights to do a live action TV series for the wildcards IP. Now, I say that Martin is an author in this series because each book, save for a small few, each book is an anthology telling one overarching story, which is such a unique way to... Uh, yeah, this is probably one of my favorite science fiction series in fiction just as a general statement. It's just so well done. All of the authors that are involved, we'll, we'll get into a little bit more details in just a minute. But yeah, that is the news there. Which brings us to comic books uh, suggestions, comic books and books. And the suggestions, we're going to continue our wild cards conversation because that's the first suggestion is start these wild card books. I don't remember the name of the first book. They all have playing card themed names. Again, there are 28 novels in the series with a 29th and 30th and 31st all being worked on currently. George R. R. Martin is the editor. He's the one that keeps all of these stories together. He is also a contributing author and each book contains roughly five to six authors, give or take. And, and again, each author writes their own story for one of the characters in this universe. And then Martin is the one that interweaves them so that it tells an overarching story so that everyone's story adds to the overall, it's just just, oh, it's just such a unique way to do superhero fiction, science fiction. It's a combination of the two. Al alternative history fiction as well. Uh, so just an incredible, incredible series if you haven't read them. There are most of them, not all of them, but most of them are relatively short, so they are easy to read, even though they are very much engrossing. You won't be able to put them down. And then our other suggestion for this episode is the Mortal Kombat X comic book. It is not canon. It is no longer part of the actual game uh, uh, story, but it's still pretty great. It is definitely worth a read if you can get your hands on it or if you, even, if you can even find a digital copy because the physical copies are going for an insane amount these days. Something like 90 bucks an issue because they're, they only printed so many. Uh, so that those are our suggestions for comic books and books. Let's keep this train right on rolling into TV streaming. Uh, we do have some follow-ups in TV streaming. We're going to start first with the giant pink elephant in the room, and that is Stranger Things. Season four has been announced as far as the release dates. That's right, multiple dates for the release of Stranger Things Season 4. Uh, part 1 is going to be released May 27th, and Part 2 is going to be released July 1st. We also got the announcement that, as we called it here on the channel, Season 5 is going to be the end of the story for Stranger Things. This has been planned by the Duffer Brothers. They told us as much at least twice 
in the distant past, and people just apparently seem to forget that this happened because there's been speculation that they were trying to go for 10 seasons. No, they told us they have approximately four to five seasons worth of a story, and as we get closer to the end is when they're going to make the decision on which one of those is accurate, four or five. Uh, it seems that it's going to take five seasons to tell the story they wanted to tell. Again, this is not really a surprise if you've been paying attention, but now we know for absolute certain that these are the, this is the way that things are, go are going to be going. Sorry, first day with the new tongue. Uh, our next update, our follow-up rather, is Peacemaker has uh, been announced to have been picked up for a second season. So congratulations to uh, James Gunn, John Cena, and company that are all involved with the Peacemaker series. It is definitely worth a watch. If you haven't watched it yet, uh, I... I say that with a little bit of hesitation because there are a lot of dick and fart jokes in this series. So if you have a something of a Kevin Smith kind of appreciation for humor, then this is absolutely going to be right up your alley. And I think that the I think that James Gunn messed up the message in season one because it's not exactly what he wants it to be, but uh, that's a story, or uh, that's a conversation for a different day. Uh, and our final piece of follow-up is a cancellation of a show on Netflix. The uh, the Another Life series has been announced that will not be picked up for a third season. So Katie Sackhoff's current science fiction vehicle is now no more. Now let's get into trailers. <laughs> we have some trailers to talk about. First up is the new Chip and Dale trainer, uh, trailer. Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers is returning. Kind of a hybrid. We talked about it when they announced it. Now we have a trailer and... I really don't know what to make of this. There's a lot of weird going on here. Are they making fun of the chipmunks? Like, what? Are the uh, rescue rangers, rather? Like, ch 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 chip and Dale. That's, that's the one that I miss. Anyway, uh, and then our other trailer we're talking about is The Man Who Fell to Earth. Joetel Ejiofor, I, I, I can never say his name properly, so I do apologize, but a uh, fantastic actor going to be picking up where the David Bowie movie left off. Sadly, David Bowie will not be able to reprise his role as he is passed on, but Bill Nye is going to be uh, portraying the character Thomas Jerome Newton, who David Bowie portrayed in the movie, who is the main character of the book that all of this is based on. And Ezio Four is going to be playing a character called Faraday, who is another alien that uh, David Bowie's character has called down to Earth. Just really crazy and interesting and cult following stuff. And we have a trailer for it. And I, it looks great. Honestly, this looks fantastic. I love Shuettle as you for, I think he is one of the greatest actors of our time. Uh, this is going to be at least something we're going to give probably three or four episodes into the season before we make any sort of decisions on its quality. Uh, and that is what we've got there. That's all we have in TV streaming, except for, Suggestions. So getting into TV streaming suggestions, we are talking about first Succession over on HBO Max. Uh, I, I know we've gotten into this one before. This is one of the best written shows on television right now, on streaming, whatever, however you want to put that phrase. Uh, just brilliant. <laughs> Kieran Culkin is honestly uh, a, an amazing and amazing talent that I feel like is grossly underused in a lot of ways except for in this show and just all of the all of the players here honestly do dark humor so well I, you really must watch it and then our other suggestion is Marvelous Miss Maisel season four has begun rolling out and if you are falling behind you need to catch up because this probably is the best written comedy on TV and streaming right now, easily, if not the best show all around. Uh, just hilariously written, expertly executed by the actors involved. Uh, Amy Sherman Palladino is one of those writers that writes dialogue the way it should be, not the way it is. And I, it, I just feel like this is absolutely a do not miss series. If you are, again, if you are not caught up, there's... This is season four. We're three, epi two episodes rather into season four. So you've got a little bit of catching up to do, but it is absolutely worth it. Before we get any deeper in here, nerds, I just want to remind you, if you have not already, 
please don't forget to click the thumbs up button down there below the video. Let the algorithm gods know that what's going on here is legit and awesome and wonderful so that more people can join in this conversation with us. That being said, I return you now to your regularly scheduled news program. Rolling once more into movie section, uh, we have some follow-ups to do in the movie section. First up is Quiet Place. Uh, at, honestly, I think it was as I was going to upload last week's episode is when these announcements were made. So you probably have already heard this, but we have confirmation that there is going to be a third proper Quiet Place movie, as well as a spin-off movie. The third movie is coming out in 2025, and the spin-off movie is going to be coming out sometime sooner than that. Uh, no specifics beyond that were given. We will be keeping tabs on this because this is one of probably the better science fiction horror movies to come out in the last 10 to 15 years, so absolutely something that is worth getting nerdy about. Our next follow-up has to do with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We got official announcements from Paramount and Nickelodeon saying that we will be seeing in 2023 not just the Seth Rogen 3D animated movie that we all uh, already know is coming. It's been announced and teased for a little while now. But we will also be getting a, quote, series of villain-driven, unquote, movies in 2023. What exactly that means very much still remains to be seen. If it is villain driven, meaning we're going to be following the villain as the main character throughout these movies, who knows? We do know that each movie, however many there are in the series, my assumption when you say the word series is that it's going to be around five. But again, that is an assumption, not uh, anything that has been announced. But so we do know about these series of movies that each one is going to revolve around a different villain from the TMNT universe. And uh, I, I believe there was even reference to the fact that some of these villains haven't really been given a lot of attention previously in the universe as well. So what exactly that means, again, we don't know yet until they elaborate a little bit more, but that's pretty awesome five, roughly five to six movies in 2023 in the TMNT universe. Uh, it seems that the uh, villain-based movies, as they keep calling them, are also going to be 3D animated because if you've already got all of the assets there, why not do as much as you can with them? It makes a lot of sense. Though, the series of villain-centric movies will not be theatrically released, seems to be the implication. Again, that is not explicitly laid out. It is just implied that they are going to be going straight to Paramount+, Plus, and the Seth Rogen movie is going to be a theatrical release. Next up is some casting announcements. We have a casting piece for Craven the Hunter. We have Fred Hetchinger, uh, long and confusing. Uh, he's been cast to play Chameleon, uh, the Craven the Hunter's illegitimate half-brother. Uh, the movie, again, is set to release January 13th of 2023. Uh, so Fred Hetchinger, you might or might not remember him. We did talk about the series that he is most well known for, and that is The White Lotus. He is the brother to the main, he's the, 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 the son in the main family. So uh, interesting choice. I, again, very, very limited exposure to this actor, so I don't know. And I'm, I'm not the hugest Spider-Man reader. I've, I've made no qualms about that in the past. I will continue to admit uh, where I am not not the most well-qualified nerd, and Spider-Man comics is one of those areas. So yeah, definitely interesting to see what's going to happen here. No casting as of yet for who may or may not be playing Craven. We do know that Russell Crowe is going to be in the movie. Don't know exactly what his role is going to be either. Presumably it's going to be Craven and Chameleon's father, but again, that's just conjecture, so let's move right along. And we have one piece of actual news. We have the announcement of a new superhero series, it would seem. 
So the name of the superhero is Zero. Uh, the production company that is going to be doing this is G-Unit Film and Television. That's right. 50 Cent is starting a production company called G-Unit Film and Television. They are going to be teaming up with uh, Color Farm Media. Uh, and they're going to be bringing the character Zero, who was created by writer Chris uh, Christopher Cross for DC, which is weird that this is this is who it's going to be, not Warner Brothers, but I mean, whatever. It's a lesser known hero, so maybe that he's not part of the Warner Brothers contract. But yeah, 50 Cent is bringing us a superhero. It, it, so if you don't know who Zero is, Zero is a, a, a secret agent <clears throat> who is an African-American who goes undercover as a white man and I don't know, I, I haven't read any of these books. I've just read the synopsis and it gets a little confusing. Somehow he learns some sort of moral thing because of going undercover as a white man and he has to deal with these two different, I don't know. I, it sounded a lot more interesting than I'm making it sound right now. Uh, I, I'm definitely interested to see what 50 Cent, uh, Curtis Jackson, uh, ha can bring to the conversation, if anything at all, or if it's just going to be uh, an another Michael Bay. Um, but it was made known that they are planning on turning this into a franchise, so it will not be a one-off movie, assuming it does moderately well when it's released. That is everything we have in this section. Again, aside for the suggestions. So... <clears throat> Movie section suggestions, we have one big one, and that is Wes Anderson's French Dispatch. Uh, it has been released on HBO Max. I'm pretty sure that's how I watched it. It could have been Netflix or something else, one of the other streamers, but I'm pretty sure it was HBO Max. Um, most Wes Anderson movie to ever Wes Anderson. If you are... If you're interested in film as a thing to study, or you just like really quirky comedy movies, this movie will scratch both of those itches in spades. This is, again, the most Wes Anderson movie to have ever been released. Uh, just, I'm not always the biggest fan of Wes Anderson. I'm not one of the Wes Anderson files that just loves everything the man does because some of the stuff's really boring. But French Dispatch is definitely not one of the boring ones. This one was a lot of fun. Absolutely go recommend, I uh, recommend you go watch it. And now all of you gossips, that brings us to the reason you're here, which is the rumor mill. Uh, so we do have a new source for this episode. We don't have any confirmations or refutations necessarily, but we'll get to that in a moment. First things first, we're talking about Wolverine in Doctor Strange 2. Uh, we have a new source that says that Hugh Jackman will in fact be re, uh, re playing the role that he made famous. Uh, that's not, none of those words are real. <laughs> Hugh Jackman's going to have a cameo in Doctor Strange 2. Uh, we've heard this from so many sources at this point. Uh, I would be rather surprised if this didn't happen. Even, again, just cameo. I don't believe there's going to be any sort of significant role that Hugh Jackman is going to be playing, but cameo, uh, yeah, for sure. 80% likely that this is going to happen. I, I feel like that's the percentage we've been giving it, but there is still a window of doubt, and that's all I'm saying. So now let's move into new rumors, and our next one has to do with Godzilla, not the Americanized Godzilla that we've been getting, King of the Monsters and such and so on and so forth, uh, but the OG Toho Godzilla. There is a rumor that they are actively in production or are looking to go into active production on a new Toho Godzilla movie. Toho is the original home of the mon the king of the monsters. Uh, Toho is the owners of the license. They license it out so that legendary pictures can do whatever the hell they're doing with it. Uh, so yeah, I, this makes sense. It's been a little while since we've seen a Toho Godzilla movie. There's no reason to think otherwise. So yeah, we're going 85% likely that Toho is going to make another Godzilla movie very, very soon. Now this next rumor, this one's a little difficult because there's going to be a lot of emotion involved because this is a, a very largely loved franchise. Firefly is in the rumor mill, and there's, uh, depending on the, the source, there's a variation of a rumor saying that now that Disney owns the rights to Firefly, 
They are either going to reboot entirely the series with brand new actors and a brand new storyline, or they are going to revive the series with the original actors, Nathan Fillion and so on and company and so forth. Uh, Alan Tudyk, probably not unless they do flashbacks, but I mean, that man is kind of a time traveling vampire anyway, so it's okay. We, there are a few sources that are talking about this like it's already done. Like it, it, Disney might as well announce it tomorrow because everybody already knows it's happening. Well, that's not exactly the case. It is not 100% in the bag yet. It would make a whole lot of sense. It would be very logical for Disney to want to do this because of the fan love for this series. Uh, I feel like there is a fair argument to be made that the the what Fox did to Firefly when it was airing originally was enough to kill this series for good. Even when they released the Serenity movie, there was not any sort of fanfare or knowledge amongst the community that, that's, that such things were happening unless you were a diehard fan already. So it's really difficult to get new diehard fans for a, a series that has not been on air for, it's been approximately 20 plus years at this point. So yeah, uh, I would love for this to happen. I'm giving this a higher percentage because I think it should happen. If I'm going to be 100% honest, the 65% likelihood that I'm giving this is probably too high. 50% uh, would probably be more accurate, but 65 just because I feel like Disney's smart enough to know that they have a cult classic on their hands and that they can do something with it. I am inclined to believe that they will, if they do something with this property, it will be a complete reboot and not a revival. We can get into that conversation down in the comments if you so desire, <clears throat> but that is where we're sitting there. Uh, and then we have a couple, uh, three actually, <laughs> technically kind of four, but three video game rumors that we gotta get out of the way. So the first one is one that's near and dear to my heart and probably not to yours, maybe. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 11, uh, there is a new rumor that there is a playable reptile fight. Uh, so the basis of this, if uh, if you keep track of these things at all, uh, the basis of this is the Thinny, who is a community known uh, uh, data miner for the Mortal Kombat and uh, just NetherRealm games in general, uh, found some code referencing a reptile fight, a secret fight where you could have fought reptile at one point. And now that has spun into a rumor that the fight is still in the game. If you read all of what the Thinny had to say about the subject, you would know that that's not the way this is going. Uh, it was at one point in the game. It is not anymore. It has not been for a while. Uh, it wasn't even actually in the game to the point where you could access it. Just the lines of code existed, but accessing those lines of code was not possible. So sadly, I have to give this one a 0% likelihood. There is not a way to fight Reptile. Those, the, the, the things that you've been hearing online about you push this uh, button combination when you're loading into the crypt and it sends you this, uh, this vulture and then you kill the vulture and you fight Reptile. No, <laughs> uh, the vultures are pretty random. There's no guarantee that the vulture is going to show up. The button combination does nothing and you can kill all of the vultures for money, but that's about it. So yeah, 0% chance that there is a current reptile fight in Mortal Kombat 11. Our next rumor has to do with some FromSoft stuff. Uh, Bloodborne is in the rumor mill, and that is because people are saying that they are hearing that we might be getting either a sequel to Bloodborne or a PS5 port of the original. Neither of these things are likely. All of the actual uh, leakers with any sort of track record are saying that this is dead in the water. FromSoft is focusing on a number of other projects. There are uh, other sequels that will likely be coming. Bloodborne, however, is not one of them. There is a sliver of hope because nobody ever knows 100% when they are a quote-unquote leaker. Uh, they are really... 
I'm talking to sources who may or may not actually have good information. So we will give this one a little bit more hope than we gave the Mortal Kombat rumor and that it, we're going to go about 10% likely that we will see a sequel or a port to the PS5 of Bloodborne. Avatar The Last Airbender is also in the rumor mill for video games. This time it's kind of two rumors. So uh, it is a rumor that uh, there is both an MMORPG and a standard RPG that are not only in development actively right now, this very moment, but they are so actively in development that we are going to be getting word of a release date for them soon. So there's the two rumors. We have actively in development for these two games and they are going to be releasing soon. So that's how we're splitting this. We're not splitting it based on MMORPG versus the standard RPG because yeah, sure, maybe there's they coincide, they play well together. Um, so likelihood that there is uh, an MMO and or a standard RPG currently in the works for the IP of Avatar The Last Airbender, that's that's pretty likely, though there is, it's not the greatest source and so on and so forth. So we're putting this right in the 50% range just because it really could go either way. As far as releasing very soon, uh, we're going to go 15% for that one because that seems really unlikely. Uh, once again, not the greatest source for these kind of things. Just thought it was a lot of fun to consider what might actually be coming down the pipe uh, when it comes to the, the, the this IP, Avatar, being so fan-loved and so on and so forth. So it just seems like a good idea to do something with uh, Avatar. Uh, it doesn't seem like a great idea to keep it so under wraps that you announce it all of a sudden and take the fandom by surprise. Just saying. There's a bunch more news and rumors, nerds. If you want to catch up if, or if you're falling behind at all, then you can click or tap the boxes that show up there to the side. Oh, that side. <laughs> to the side of my face. Uh, if you're listening on audio, then go check out the YouTube channel, Generally Nerdy. Uh, go do all of the things. I appreciate your faces, nerds. We will see you in the next one before we head out, though, always. Always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.